Hi there, Russell Bishop here with Nat Sherat. Today we're going to focus this webinar on what does it mean to be on a spiritual journey, a lifelong process for many of us, and the journey that leads back into the depth of who we truly are, into our soul. We hope you enjoy today's experience and we look forward to sharing with you. And just to reiterate what Russell was saying, just any time you feel like you have a question or you want to um, do that, you don't have to wait for us to, to, to do that, to raise your hand as we move forward with this. So Nat, um, how long have you been consciously working on developing your, I'll just say, spiritual awareness? Well, <laughs> I've been on the path I'm on. <laughs> I've been I've been doing this work. Um, well, I'd say I was searching for even as a, a young kid, I was always interested in uh, these universal ideas and like trying to figure out how it worked and all of that. And I've been doing this um, work more consciously. What has it been? So it's been 25 years, I think, maybe more, 27 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how long I've been doing it. Um, and if you don't mind saying, Russ, what, how long have you been doing this? Well, the, um, several answers to that. The, this very particular um, spiritual journey uh, began for me in 1973. Um, and that's when I met John Roger and first thought the guy was Looney Tunes um, uh, until I reread something. And when I reread it, it was like, uh, who changed the words? And of course, what happened was something changed inside of me so I could perceive better. But that actually, uh, in, I have this new book called From Self Talk to Soul Talk. And in there, I talk a little bit about when I was a, a young kid, uh, we were a Presbyterian family had Presbyterian ministers in the family. So it meant going to Presbyterian church every Sunday. Um, and I hated sitting in those sermons, but I loved the music. And I was always be transported by that. Um, and so I later had some language around that and that the, the music took me into spiritual realms. And there's a whole path that's called Shabda Yoga, which is called the path of light and sound or the audible light stream. And it's interesting, every religion in the world uses music, singing, chanting, something along that line, because it lifts the spirit. So I can go back to a little kid and not knowing I was on a spiritual journey, but journeying, if you will. And but it wasn't until 73 that it became a more conscious choice uh, for me. So what's the, I mean, one of the things we could get into is, is on your, on the journey you've been on, what have been the blocks? What have, what have been the challenges? Well, um, I suppose the biggest challenge is ego. Um, and uh, sometimes it's the ego of, well, I know this, or I read that, or I knew this other thing. And uh, some of that is the, the belief structure that built up around it. And so I know that in my family growing up, there was a whole lot of, well, you know, we'll never amount to much. And if we're not going to amount to much, well, then how could you amount to much spiritually? So there's a combination of ego that says, I can really do this. And another part says, yeah, but not really. So it's a combination of false knowledge and false denial. And I think the, the real secret has been, um, well, I always like to talk about awakening as a, a real critical piece to this uh, whole process. And it's pretty obvious if you say, um, well, something that awakens was previously asleep. That's obvious. It's also obvious, but never thought of, is that if, if something awakens was previously asleep, well, if something was asleep, what was it before that? And the answer is awake. And so when we created insight way back in the 70s, we call it the awakening heart because uh, we weren't trying to change anybody, but just facilitate people awakening to something that's already there. 
And so we call it becoming more of who you already are. So awakening to me is going into who I am in the spirit and the heart and recognizing that. And that's a loving essence that comes forward as I awaken to it. Then I can become more aware of how that's present in life and hopefully become more aware of how I move myself out of it. And I think that's been one of the most important parts of my journey is noticing how I move myself out of the loving spirit and get caught up in the ego and the externals of the world. So well, that's sort of a rambly answer to your question. I don't know if it. If no, it I think works. that it, it definitely, it was a good answer. I mean, it was an answer to your experience with it. Um, I mean, for me, it, it brought up when you were talking about that, it brought up this, this story, um, about, and it, it relates in terms of how quickly you can move yourself back into alignment. Mm -hmm. Um, because there's those things that take, there's things that take us out of alignment, such as, um, those things that would create separation uh, those things that create discouragement. Um, but there was a particular time that I was dealing with anger, you know, and sometimes it's those kind of so-called negative emotions, but those emotions that, that aren't supportive, that uh, can, can move our convergence point inside out of uh, that, that spiritual flow, that loving flow. And, and I remember, so I, just as a context, um, that Russell talked about John Roger and I lived and worked with him for many years. If any of you on here don't know that, um, and there was one point where I kept doing the same thing around getting angry about something, uh, and it, and Jer basically said, you know, I was, I was holding, cause he had, he could hold karma for people. Um, I'm, I was holding that karma back for you, but now you get to learn about anger. And I was like, oh man, okay, here we go. Well, it took me years of, uh, having, working with this issue of anger, um, literally years from that point on. And this one day there was a particular person who worked with us, which to me, could just knew the button to press with me to make me particularly angry <laughs> and so I uh we were getting we were going to an appointment or something and it was me and John Roger and this other person and this person was chattering their mouth about something to me and I lost my cool and I started just like swearing and yelling I mean I really lost it with this person and you know they're coming up to me like in my face and they're like what are you going to do about it and I'm like what are you going to do it about it this whole thing right and we knew if either of us actually got physical that we'd be fired um so nothing physically happened uh but but John Roger you know uh told me to, to knock it out, you know, and then, and then we were like kind of going back and forth and we got in the car and, or JR told me, get in the car, Nat, and knock it off. And I just immediately shut it off, got in the car and sat down and just let myself cool down. I didn't keep going with it. I just stopped it. And later on, JR came and talked to me. Um, and JR's what we call John Roger for short. Um, it's his nickname. And so Jared came to me and he's like, I thought he was going to be like, hey, you're you're fired. That was like inappropriate to be <laughs> completely losing your cool like that. Um, and instead, he was like, I, I, you know, I'm proud of how you handled that. And I was like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> like, you're proud of how I handled that? I completely lost my cool. But the point was, is that when he um, told me knock it off. I was able to just turn it off, let it go, get in the car. Like I was able, I was able to drop what, what was going on. And I was able to drop that anger and just like, you know, it took me a, a few minutes to like come back into like an okay place because of all the adrenaline and everything that had been dumped in my system. But 
I think the point is, is that, you know, it's, it's not that we don't have those experiences in life. Um, it, it's really about how quickly we can move from them and back into an alignment place, how quickly we can drop whatever it is, the righteousness, the, all of it that we might have and let that go in order to come back into and have that kind of control over oneself um, to be able to do that. And, th and that's like when that karma, you know, at least I relate to that karma, like completed uh, in terms of learning about anger. It wasn't that I didn't get angry. It was that I had the ability to drop it when I needed to. Um, and that to me is, is something on my journey that has been something I've really learned. That's one of the really important ones in that um, uh, if you're in a human body, anger is going to show up. And one of the things that uh, I learned intellectually early on in facilitating seminars was that, uh, and, and probably because I was trained as a psychologist initially, anger is never a primary response inside of somebody. It's a secondary response. And what's it secondary to? Uh, and I think the the simplified. I, I have a guess. I have a guess. Is it secondary to playing golf? Because <laughs> <laughs> I've seen I've played golf with you, Russell, and I think anger is secondary to playing golf for you. <laughs> well, no, it, it's, it's secondary meaning it's not a primary response. Yeah, it's it's secondary to caring. And. Uh, w whenever I'm angry, I, there's, there's, I've, I've asked this question of so many people in seminars who will be angry about something. Well, um, tell me what it is you care about. I don't care about that. Oh, really? Did you ever have anybody who didn't care about something tell you they didn't care about it? No, because they don't care about it. So anger is just a caring that's in ineffectively expressed. And so, uh, you know, there's a phrase that we, many of us have used a lot that says peace is present. And uh, I always like to say, yeah, peace is present. The question is, am I present with the peace? And one of the things I've learned in this facilitation world for over these many years is that uh, it's not about the negative expression that I enter into. It's that that removes me from the experience of the peace. It removes me from the experience of my own love for myself or anybody else. But the, the question is, what do I have to focus on to leave? So when a person's in a loving or, or peaceful state, they rarely are uh, aware going, oh, wow, I'm really in a loving, peaceful state. But we know we were in a loving, peaceful state just after we left. And so, uh, the question often then becomes, well, what did I have to focus on in order to leave? And what can I focus on to come back? And that's probably what Jer was congratulating for was that you went, oh, boom, you made the awareness and you made the shift and you came back into some other state that was always with you. But boy, yeah. when we go into that other state, it's really hard to keep track of. Yeah, and, and the beauty like of what you said of peace is present um, is that when I let go of the anger, when, I, when you let go of whatever it is that's bothering you, peace is present. And it, it naturally, it's our, it is our natural state once you let go of mm -hmm. whatever's causing the disturbance in the first place. Hmm. You know, one of the uh, the metaphors for expanding awareness, I guess there's actually two that occur to me. Uh, I remember facilitating a, an insight seminar years ago. There were about 200, maybe 225 people or so in, in, the, in the seminar. And um, John Roger was co-facilitating with me. And we went on a break and JR came up to me and says, Russell, you seem really frustrated. What's up? And I said, they're so slow to wake up. And, and he looked at me and he said, oh, oh, I see. 
So, so Russell, if you had a little two-year-old baby and it was sleeping, would you shake it and tell it, wake up, grow faster? Well, no. And he said, I said, well, okay. So of course that had to sink in a little bit is that um, sleeping is part of awakening. And it's a process we need to go into in order to process information. And then I sort of got that. And then about a month later or so, we were running another seminar together. And uh, he said, Russell, you seem kind of frustrated again. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, uh, and we said something about that. And I, I sort of knew, well, I can't really complain about awakening. I said, I said well, you know, uh, da, 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 da. they're so unaware. Uh, and he, he, he just really said this beautiful little thing to me. He said, so, and this goes to your earlier question about what gets in the way. And I said, ego. He said, uh, so you misunderstood your role here. I said, yeah. He said, you think you're here for the harvest. And your job is simply plant the seeds. And they're not your seeds. Oh. Yeah, because they come in their own time. So what may look like someone is denying or something is um, resisting or anything like that, it just may be the state that we might call sleep. And when the seed's in the ground, is it sleeping? Well, yeah, compared to what it'll be when it's the flower or the wheat, but it's all part of the preparation process. So learning to bless everything that I'm going through and everything everybody else is going through as all part of the awakening process, that's pretty, pretty big, pretty big. Yeah. And with that, the second part was expanding awareness. Now in, in this uh, Shabda yoga practice that uh, we're part of and that many others are part of in different organizations, and in many spiritual organizations, there are kind of like hierarchies. At least it looks like a hierarchy. So we talk about a mental level and an emotional level and a physical level and all that kind of stuff. And there seems like there's a, a level above, and there is to a certain extent. But it occurred to me uh, recently that if you could take a big sheet of paper and just say that's all of awareness, and then just draw a circle in the middle, and say, well, that's the part I'm currently aware of, and there's all this others out here. And as I awaken, that circle expands, and now I'm even more aware. But I'm not hierarchically aware, like there's a better or a lesser, it's just I'm aware of more of what already is. And that's what, to me, the spiritual journey is about. As I go in, I become more aware, and I can contain more of what the spiritual awareness or path is about so expanding an awareness is a little different than going up in awareness although that may just be semantic at some level yeah i i think that there's a couple of things you said in there that um you know was really interesting to me in terms of planting the seeds that you're not there for the harvest. And to me, I think when you start doing spiritual work uh, beyond, beyond your own awareness, even where you are there of service to others and of service, bringing the light to others um, and uplifting others is that, you know, often it really isn't that you're going to see the results of of what you do. Um, and recently I got some land here in Puerto Rico and uh, I wanna plant a lot of trees. And there's this idea too, which is kind of, and I don't remember the saying, but someone was talking to me about it, about you know the, the day that you actually are planting trees that you'll never see grown to their full maturity, but you're doing it for others down the line. Um, and to me, that's a lot of what you were speaking to of a, a different consciousness, which uh, JR said that God is a dynastic thinker. And, you know, if you're thinking dynastically, you're thinking many generations down the line. Um, and so 
you know, when you're looking at when we're talking about what we're talking about here, um, some of this may not even come into fruition. A lot of what we do until many that we may not never see it, um, but you do it anyway. And I think that's a when you're in this area of service, that's a really powerful consciousness place to be coming from. Um, and, and so I just wanted to focus in on that because that really, I think brought that forward, you know, it's something that's really helpful, I think, to keep in mind, uh, when you're, when you're doing these things. You know, I'm reminded of, um, uh, back in 1995, uh, and that was probably right around when you started hanging yeah. around. We're what this little event that we called the Living and Grace Retreat. And there were a couple of hundred of us there. And uh, I had just had this experience where an organization that I had started uh, had been sort of invited me to go away. Uh, <laughs> it was a little consulting company that I had started. And it was really kind of like shock. Uh, and I had this opportunity to do this public sharing with John Roger in front of all these 200 some odd people. And what I said to him was that I just didn't feel the motivation to do anything anymore. And he asked me, so what's that about? And I said, well, you know, I made all my life, um, uh, which is at that point professionally was 20 some years, uh, about making a difference or making a contribution. And Jared says, yeah. And I said, the, the problem is that uh, if I say I want to make a difference or I want to make a contribution, it's fundamentally a judgment against God. And Jared kind of sort of looked at me kind of askance. He said, well, well, what do you mean? I said, well, it's like this. Dear God, you're doing okay. But if you had me here, oh, boy, could we make a difference. And Jared cracked up and he said, I see what you're saying. Um, and it, it's a wise thing to be aware of because uh, with anything, I mean, there's people who started doing insight facilitation and then went off and did their own thing because they could do better. Uh, it says it's easy when we're out there doing any of this kind of work uh, to get caught in the ego. And the ego says, I'm doing it and I'm doing it better. And that's sort of a, a pathway into uh, an experience of hell of one kind or another, <clears throat> not of fire and brimstone, but of my own separation. He said, however, there is this thing called the spiritual ego. Yeah, what's that? Well, the spiritual ego presents to you a way of service that is of potential use here into the world whether it's serving a person or many people or planting the trees, there's a lot of ways. But how is spirit going to activate that into the world? Well, it needs Nat or it needs Russell or it needs Peter or it needs any of us to do something. Well, how do we do something? Well, we have our ego structure, our experiences and our skills. And, and so spirit drops the motivation in or the inspiration and then it uses our capability to do it in the world. So you can use your ego to serve the higher ego of spirit. But you have to be careful because as soon as you start doing it, some part wants to go, hey, look what I did. And that's where the, and that's what he was really counseling me about. And we had that conversation three grace retreats in a row because it was really hard to get how to do that. And it still is in some respects. But how do I receive the inner guidance that is about my own spiritual awakening such that I could serve anybody else in theirs without getting caught in I'm doing it. And uh, it's, it's sort of the metaphor is uh, there's electrical wires that run to the light bulb. Uh, and it's the electricity that lights up the bulb, not the wire. So I try to think of myself as wire and sometimes electricity comes through it. And sometimes there's a light bulb on the other end. <laughs> yeah, that's, <clears throat> I, I appreciate the, 
the looking at, at, the, at the spiritual ego. Um, because if you really look at it in a way, you know, if you can touch into it, it's not God working through us. It's, it's God as us because we are that extension when you tap into it. Um, and, and relating to the, the, and I think this relates to what you were talking about earlier is the hierarchy of, of, um, the levels and consciousness. A lot of the ways I relate to it is <clears throat> through frequency or vibration or density, um, in terms of like, if it's all God, but then there's, there's some density here that's, that's more crude, uh, until you get into the, the positive realms into the more refined realms and so you become aware of it in that way um and then yeah the spirit it you know benjamin franklin i believe is benjamin franklin said if i were to truly be humble i'm afraid i'd be proud of it and <laughs> i you know i think that relates to that spiritual ego where it's like, yes, you you do it, but then as soon as you think that you're doing that, you're probably not doing it, because as soon as you think that like you're expressing through the spiritual ego, it's probably the regular ego that's involved, and there's nothing wrong with the ego. It's just you know, it's a it has its function here. I mean, it helps us get up and do things in this world. To me, it's more just about it. is it directed. Are you directing your ego towards the spiritual work? And then, as you said, then it helps the <clears throat> spiritual ego. Yeah. Well, I used the word motivation, and then I adjusted it to inspiration. And yeah. one of the things that I learned uh, some time ago, and I, I write a little bit about it in this book, uh, is that uh, inspiration has come to mean something that happens outside of me, that comes to me, and I'm inspired. And we have motivational speakers and they're trying to inspire me into something else. But the, the word comes from a Latin root word called from the what's called the Vulgate Latin. Uh, and it comes from the word inspirare, which literally means to be breathed by spirit. Doesn't mean to breathe in spirit. It means to be breathed by spirit. So inspiration uh, is that act of awakening to that spiritual call that's calling to each of us that's on this call and each of us all over the planet. But how do I receive that? And then if I've received it, then I might have a goal in life that's called an aspiration. An aspiration isn't about, here's what I intend to achieve out of me. It's the divinely inspired goal. How would spirit have me serve? And I think that's a wonderful uh, revelation for me is that there is this other thing as I awaken to it, it can awaken more in me. That's part of the journey. Very well said. Thank you. And, and great. Um, I always love the etymology of words because it, it does often shed light onto what we're even talking about. Um, I'd like to know, does anyone have any questions or, or something they'd like to ask of Russell or myself or um, things they'd like us to address? And just remember yes. that at the bottom of your screen, there's a little thing that says reactions. You click that and you'll see Ray's hand. And I see, I see Kay. I see Kay. Yeah. Kay, you and can unmute, to unmute yourself. Yes. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank both of you. Russell, your book is uh, truly inspiring. Soul Talk, From Self Talk to Soul Talk. And Nat, I love your, I guess we call them blogs or your contributions. And they're coming out more regularly now. They're at least once a week. So if anybody uh, on this particular Zoom is not signed up for Nat, I, hopefully Nat, you'll put that in the chat, how we can uh, participate more with you. 
And I just had one really quick comment is um, some of us in the movement of spiritual and awareness um, actually have ordinations. And in my blessing is the word path, uh, walk the path of light or walk the path of spirit three times. So I'm really doing a deep dive during this to look at what path is. And it's more for me, a metaphor for traveling and for um, and just experiencing at a deep level. So I'd love to hear more about what other people might look at as a path to, and many blessings to you both that God bless, thanks. Thank you, Kay. Um, I will put up, thank you for mentioning that too. I'll put up uh, a few things and I'll let Russell put up. Um, also on the chat, his, his uh, information. Um, you can go to my website. You can, if you'd like uh, to do a schedule a complimentary one-on-one -on -one with me, I'll put that Calendly link in there. You can also get it through the website I'll put there. Um, my weekly newsletter, and I'll put my email there too um, in this. Uh, just put, I think I just put it all at once, but uh, get to me through my website, email me, uh, that's transcend.online. And, and you can see a place to sign up for that weekly newsletter. So, and I know Russell has that offer too. And I'll, I'll let you say something, Russell, it looks like you wanna say something and then I'll talk back to what Kay was saying. No, just to say, um, uh, Matt and I are both um, available to do some complimentary one-to-one -one sessions with anybody, uh, whether you're on this call or not. So I put both a website link on mine, where if you go to that, you can just sign up and it'll directly to put you to my calendar, show you available times that it will show in your time zone, and you can book a call. Uh, and more than happy to do that. Or you can email me. So I put that in there as well. Um, so we love doing this. Also, Kay, uh, who did that blessing? Um, John Roger did. In, okay. um, it was 50 years ago, 50 and a half years ago, nice. almost 51 years ago. So um, Nice, because I've heard Jer say many times, you know, when someone brings that up, uh, you should talk to the person who did it for you. <laughs> so, but Go inside. Uh, <laughs> yes. you can ask. Uh, and then in terms of, of, you know, it also brings that question, I, I believe, and Russell, you may be more hip to this, uh, is there's a, a biblical verse called is it straight as the path and narrow as the way or something like that? The gate, um, which infers that there is a path that we're walking. And, and I do relate in a way that there is a, you know, there, there is a path in a sense, but it's not one with the destination. Um, well, the destination is always God and ultimately not one soul will be lost so ultimately the path does lead back it leads all the aspects of god back into itself um everything that has gone out into this creation comes back uh, so i'll let i'll let russell talk about what he's talking about here yeah there's some um, uh what am I trying to say? Um, <clears throat> again, all paths lead back in. Like, so it, one of those, those of us have been around listening to and reading John Rogers stuff, you'll find that he, he often uses terms that contradict themselves. So there's no path except there's a path. But there's no path taking me to where I'm not. They're taking me to in. So he would often quote the Bible said, if you worship God, you would worship him in spirit. Um, and where's heaven? It's within. And so it, it's all about coming back within that uh, this is this is about. I'll say some more about that in, in, a, in a little bit later. 
Um, and I'm making a note so I remember. But for the moment, how about we take Mitchell? Mitch, you can unmute yourself. Yes, I've got a lot of practice. We're good at it now. Um, hi, everybody. It's great to see you all. Um, you know, I, I was going to share because it relates to the two things that came up. When I, I went through about three years of going, so God put the soul. We are the soul, but we're kind of hidden and not seeing it. And it was like, but we're not aware of it. And this is the secret is discovering we have it. And so basically, it's kind of like the butler did it. And I was like thinking like, so this is the grand mystery. It's the butler did it. And then I like really thought about that, like, like why this would be set up this way. Not like why, like I could, could understand that, but just like understanding this. And I finally realized, well, that really worked very well because nobody seems to find it very easily. And I, so that was like a clue. And then I realized also, like I thought about Buddha getting enlightenment. I realized he didn't do anything. He basically sat on his butt under a tree and he let everything fall away. And then he was enlightened. And like, now, of course, I probably boiled it down and some Buddhists will argue that. But um, I just realized like that, you know, when, when I did astrology years ago, I realized we are the sun sign. And it's both our conscious self, but it's also who we are in the soul level. And so it's like we are becoming that which we already are. So that's why there's really no path, because the only way to go is to not go anywhere. And in fact, the mind will take you away from going there. So and I just like to call it that I'm filling in all the potholes and moving the boulders that I set in from my ego to get to my soul. So that's been my uh, awareness on all that. And the other thing that follows with that is, you know, we're talking about, you know, the, the ego of it and, the, and facilitating and all of that. And I, I, I've been thinking about how, like, almost everything I've done with, in the JR and MSI Insight context, it's all about asking questions for people to answer about themselves. So a lot of your facilitating is getting people to answer the right questions that more than it is. I mean, you do lay out God, certain things and, you know, but the educari concept of bringing forth from within our own selves, the answers. And so maybe that removes some of the ego level of being a facilitator and uh, because you're not giving them the answers, you're just helping them to, to answer the questions. Absolutely. And I, I, uh, I have a subtitle for a book I haven't um, published. It's called Questions for Those in Search of Answers. Um, and because uh, that's what the whole thing is about, is, is coming in. Um, so, yeah. Well, I think we've well, done a good job of that. I would also add that um, a lot of what I'm hearing you talk about, Mitchell, is, is how I'm relating to it is the mind trying to grasp at the spirit. Right. trying to figure it out <clears throat> and and you don't figure it out the mind can never know like these questions and i love the i mean it's it's entertaining for our minds to go on this journey with the questions because you can always ask more questions you know and you can always find these universal answers and have greater ahas in the mind level but to me, there's there's a point where, well, there is a point where the mind goes, um, sometimes before you die, but obviously when when we die, um, that that level can go, uh, depending on <laughs> how that all works and where we go. Um, but that that mental, the the mental trying to find the answers is that there there it, you don't. Um, and you really, in my experience, you awaken to, to the answers. And even once you awaken to the answers, if you try to like even talk about it, as we're talking about it here, it's like it ends up just full of contradictions. As Russell was saying earlier, it ends up full of like double speak. And it's like these people don't know what what the heck they're talking about because they just keep saying these things that are contradicting each other and it's like yeah th that's when you're trying to express something of a, a different frequency a different vibration level into a denser vibration 
level. And the best you can do is say the words and hope um, that that higher frequency mm -hmm. rides on the words to give the awareness of it. Um, and, and the same with the mind, hopefully in the contemplation, you do have that moment where it moves you beyond the mind because, you know, that it's not going to be found there. And, and so a lot of what we deal with is, especially as a lot of you, I know, have been on um, your own journeys for some time, sometimes some lifetimes. Uh, that a lot of dealing in assisting others because we're the student of those above us, we're the work or the level we're on, but we're the teachers of sharing our wisdom to those who are coming behind us. They're not below us, they're just, they're, you know, their journey is of awakening. They may come awake in a way that now there are our teachers. Um, uh, but as we become the teacher, um, to all those who were assisting, you know, having that speaking from the spirit. And then what the spirit does is it just like goes like that. And you're like, what was I just saying? <laughs> <laughs> maybe that, maybe that's getting older too. Right. Um, but so I just wanted to address that point about the, the mind and, and also moving beyond it so that we have that experience of, of loving of the spirit of the sound that's just a more of a being. Yeah, that would be my conclusion as well. That I mean, I, I said it, it was very mentally expressed, but it was really like the bottom line of that is we already are what we're looking for. And only it's like just be letting go and being in present with that, which is the fun part. Well, while you're looking yeah. for your peace. <laughs> the, the value yeah. of, of, a, of a question approach is not to arrive at a mental understanding. Mm -hmm. um, JR used to say uh, about the spiritual teaching he brought forward is that you're not going to understand this or figure it out. You're just going to catch it. And you catch the spirit. And mm -hmm. uh, one of my uh, examples for most people is that when we were in school learning some kind of math, we may have all struggled with it until one day it just clicked. And, and you can never say, well, this happened and therefore I understood. It just, you caught it. And that's how you get spirit. You just catch it. Um, and the value of questions, the way we did them in insight, was everything was leading up uh, to Sunday. So those of you who've been through the insight, we'd ask that question, what do you want? What experience are you looking for? And sooner or later, as you keep evolve or revolving through those questions something opens and it doesn't open here it opens here in the heart and then an understanding is present that the mind can never comprehend mm -hmm. anyway this is all that part of that double talk too yeah thanks <laughs> thanks mitchell let's let's hear from uh carol Hi, Russell. Hi, Nat. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm so happy to be here. I, I, um, I often come on these types of calls without knowing what to expect and um, uh, or knowing how impactful they would they will be for me. But uh, today, I, I just want to bring forward three things that um, that touch me so deeply. Uh, and the first couple of ones have to do with uh, what you said, I forget which one of you said that JR holds back the karma. Oh, it was Nat, holds back the karma um, until you're ready to deal with it. And so I spent 40 years on staff, um, either avoiding my personal karma or or having him hold it back for me. I don't know which one it was, but but um, the result was, uh, was uh, a beautiful experience of participating in in developing all the things that I helped develop at Prana over mm -hmm. the years. Um, but today, the, the, the thing that came forward to me was, one of the things was that um, I, I've been, seems like I've been wrapped up in a, in a very uh, unproductive way, um, connected to my mother's fears for me and um, 
uh, and concerns for me. And the one that sticks out the most was when she would say often, I hope that people aren't taking advantage of you. And that sat with me when I look back at my life, I think, oh, I have when people with, I could interpret a lot of things that happened in my life as people taking advantage of me. But it's something I need to un unravel even further to where I can be free from, from that notion that is not is a misinterpretation of life, really. So, so light on that. And the, uh, the second thing I wanted to share was that year, years ago, maybe 40 years ago, um, there was an opportunity for a lot of people to invest in something that might not, that actually never turned out to be fruitful for anybody. And um, at that time, JR took me aside personally and said, you're, uh, you're attracted to glamor and this is, this is not necessarily something that's going to be good for you. And I ignored him because I was so attracted to the glamor of it. And I'm forgiving myself for judging myself these days, but um, I realized that there are many teachings that I, that I, you know, that weren't, I, I wasn't grasping things until I grasped them. And this latest year of my life where I've been out of prana, not living there any longer, not on staff, been living by myself, I've had more than enough opportunity for these things to start flooding in mm -hmm. that I can actually pay attention to and, and, and learn from. So I'll put that one in the light also. And the other, the last thing was, and the most important to me, it seems, is that um, uh, when I've been facilitating PTS classes or other things like that, I always ask for spirit to speak through me. And um, what I'm beginning to realize from all the prayer that I've been consciously aware of to try to learn more about how God is me and how I am God is I'm... I'm recognizing it in, in most moments in my life that I just need to slow down and listen inside and know that this is God speaking through me and, um, and to be more conscious. I, I don't know if I'm saying this right, it's the most, most powerful thing I'm experiencing right now. Um, and uh, uh, of course the words don't, don't ever, um, live up to the inner experience, but I'm starting to really feel that God is me and that I am God. So um, it's a beautiful thing that at 79 years old. So God bless us. If you want to speak to any of that, I would love it. Well, what I kind of uh, uh, thought there, Carol, is that if you, especially that first thing you mentioned about being taken advantage of. Um, uh, that's one of those things that is has multiple dimensions to it. Uh, not the least of which is the more I dwell on it, the more it will seem to be the case. And the more I dwell on it, the more I'll attract people who go, oh, she'll help. And so uh, there's a lot to that. But if you want to do, I mean, more than happy to do some one-to-one -one stuff with you. Um, you just go to the website and sign up to, I'm happy to help you with that. But I think that might be more private than it is public. Yeah. And I, I, um, you know, I think that Russell's a, a good one to work with, with that too, just in terms of I think you froze. I think I froze, didn't I? Yep. <laughs> well, welcome to Puerto Rico. I have two satellites and it still <laughs> it still goes offline. I have my network statistics here <laughs> watching it. Um anyway, so um Russell, as the creator of Insight, one of the key principles is how we create, allow, and promote everything in our lives um, which does lead to responsibility including if we allowed others to take advantage of us and it may be the case 
you know i mean i've had i've allowed or promoted or in some ways had that where i've been taken advantage of if you want to look at it that way but who do i have to blame and who do i have to forgive well it's myself um, because i am the one who allowed it and you know what is the learning in that for me mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, because everything is is if i'm setting up my karma to be taken advantage of then i'm setting up something that's for me to learn and grow in my spiritual awareness mm -hmm. and so if i'm setting this up if i'm setting this up and i'm responsible meaning i'm the one to respond to this um then it is like it, it it does all come back to me uh and and that doesn't negate uh let people off the hook who may you know victimize others um because there is people who would do harm or take advantage of um, and I'm not saying that it lets them off, but in terms of you personally dealing with that, I mean, one is to like learn from it so you don't repeat it. <clears throat> um, if you judge something, you're bound to repeat it, right? Until you forgive the judgment and, and learn from that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, and someone did ask, and, and so, I mean, Russell, I heard him say, hey, like he could go more into that one-on-one -on -one, you might want to take him I would recommend you take him up on that um and someone did uh ask about both of us talking about what are we doing for sessions is it counseling or or what is that um and I think each of us probably have a different approach a lot of mine um is working to help people find the answers that I, I see that people have their own answers and it's just reflecting back to people so that they can find their own answers so that they may be able to like see beyond their own karma that they're in. Um, so that's what my session is. And maybe Russell can say a little bit about that because on the text chat, someone did ask about us to talk about what those are. Yeah, the work that I like to do with people is, um, again, it's that reflective kind of questioning. And as people reveal areas where they might be stuck or struggling, it could be, you know, grandiose questions like, what's my purpose in life? Uh, over to how do I handle any particular kind of situation? But the, uh, uh, the focus is listening deeply uh, and listening deeply this this may or may not sound strange but there's what people say and then there's the energetic that rides underneath it and um, i've been gifted with the ability to hear some of that energetic that rides underneath the question to to reflect an even deeper question and in that there's another layer of answer that shows up and then often then there's tools that we can suggest that people can use uh, to, to help them beyond just that time together on the session, but something you can do daily or weekly or whatever it might be. But it's all about ways to facilitate an expanded awareness, um, to help people become more clear about choices they can make and about how to deal with the consequences of choices, uh, the ones that work the way we wanted them to and the ones we go, uh-oh, <laughs> that wasn't it, now what? So there's a lot to that, to be sure. But it, maybe the best thing is if you have curiosity about that, just book a free session and, and you'll find out what it's like. And then you can figure out if you want to do more of it. So. Um, Thank you both so much. Yeah. Thank you, Carol. Um, I'm going to see if, if um, I've not used this too much before. Uh, can you folks? No, not yet. I see it. You see it. Okay. You see this little whiteboard? Okay. Yeah. So here's a line. Now you can think of this line um, as representing, uh, whoa, come back. What happened to your line? <laughs> the path just changed. <laughs> undo, undo. Okay. Uh, so anyway, there's this line. Oh, good. I could put it back. 
And the line rep can represent, let's say, how positive is a person experiencing their life? And you can turn this into a lot of things, which you'll see. So down at this level uh, would be someone who has no experience of positive at all. And up here, it's 100% positive. So let's say that a person is living their life and 25% of it feels positive and 75% feels negative. So if you ask that person, what's life like, what are they likely to say? Ugh. What's normal for them? Ugh. And if something positive does happen, what do they usually say? Well, that won't last or don't know how that happened or, or whatever. Uh, right here is, uh, whoa, in the middle is kind of like uh, the 50% level. If someone is, comes in at 49% and they go through an insight or any other kind of awareness program and they jump to 51%, for the first time in their life, it's more positive than it was negative. And for those people, those, those experiences are explosive. It's like, wow, what just happened? Well, it may take as much energy to go from 49 to 51 as it took to go from zero to 49. But now let's continue on this path. And now we can also make this about spiritual awareness. So if 90% if of my life is aware and positive and 10% is negative, what does the 10% feel like? Well, by contrast to the 90% that's positive, that 10% that's negative can feel like, oh my God, what's gone on? It, it's like, it's a negative explosion because the contrast is so deep. Moving from 90 to 91 may take more energy than it took to go from, 90, from zero to 90 because it's a constant focus back into the loving perception and the loving perspective that's required. And so I point that out because often people who are on a, a spiritual journey, uh, when they, whether it's 55% and they're in the 45 of negative or the 90 and they're in the 10 of negative, feel like they're failing at something. And it's not. It's just that we're now being presented with a way to, to notice the distinction between when I'm focused in my heart and loving and when I'm focused outside. And beginning to know where that focus is that becomes negative. And that's what, Nat, you were saying, well, the gate's narrow, straight is the path. The more I get up here and the more aware I am of what I do that takes me off it, the more restrictive I become in my choices, but the more free I come in my experience. And the metaphor I use for that with people is... Uh, if you ever burn your hand on a stove or a hob in your kitchen, you'd probably restrict your behavior around the stove or the hob, but it doesn't stop you from using it. It lets you to use how lets you learn how to use it in a state of freedom. And so where do I get off the track? What choices do I make to create the pain, which then goes to, well, taking being taken advantage of or whatever the other karmas might be. So as Jerry would say, we will use everything for our learning, advancement, and growth. So here we go. That was great. And I, I just want to say that for me, what I found really helps me up my level on that diagram that Russell was just talking about is gratitude. Um, and being grateful, especially when I'm having a rough time, and finding the things I'm grateful for, um, to me, it's a precursor to, to grace. Kind of like N-acetylcysteine is a precursor for glutathione in the body. I don't know why that just came up, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but gratitude tends to be a precursor for grace and, and also for upping my level and and I've even noticed that in surfing when I've been, I've had days where I'm like frustrated and I'm literally punching the ocean and I'm sure <laughs> the ocean really cares and much good that does. But if I just like take a moment and because I'm just like missing every wave, like getting tumbled by everyone, whatever. But if I just take a moment and I've like, 
it, it literally changes my experience and I'm able to actually change my surfing. I see it in real time when I just go, you know what? I'm grateful for this beautiful water. I'm grateful for today. I'm grateful that I'm surfing, right? I start doing that. It changes it. And you can see it change in situations like that. And so that's one of the, I think it was, I think it was Meister Eckhart, if I'm saying that right, uh, who said, um, if the only prayer you ever say is thank you, that's enough. And to me, that that really captures a, a, a critical tool in your toolkit on your journey. Uh, should we talk to Mark? Yeah. Yo, Marco. If you have time, how's it going? Nice to thank you for doing this and nice to see a lot of familiar faces. Um, it's lovely to hear the information, but more than the information, just you're sharing your wisdom and knowledge and hearts. So my question that was coming to mind as we were talking is probably my question. But if, if JR was to come back into the flesh for you, Nathaniel, and for you, Russ, is there a question that comes to mind that still hasn't been answered? Well, my cheeky awesome. one would be, is this all because my mother dropped me too much when I was young? <laughs> <laughs> what do I do to remove the thickness of my own resistance? And I mean, no, I don't think I don't I don't have anything right now, but I'll I'll ponder on that for a second. Yeah. And you know, no, like there's no question be happy to see my friend and and oh i froze yeah uh, but it would be better just to have a laugh with them um and a hug you know and I, i'd say the same about others that i've lost in this lifetime mm -hmm. you know that for me it, it wouldn't be as much about what you know, I would say to someone or ask of someone, it'd be like, you know, having a laugh together and having a hug and like sharing, loving, which to me then answers a question of like, well, what am I doing with my, the people in my mm -hmm. life? It's like, am I doing that? Mm -hmm. You know, are we doing that? If we're not like having a laugh and just sharing the loving, then, then what are we doing? Because that's what I, I miss when I miss JR and when I miss others that I've lost physically. Mm -hmm. Heard. Thank you. Yeah, I think for me, uh, Mark, one of the most um, uh, important parts of all of that, I mean, uh, you and Nat having spent some time with JR and me in a different way, but a lot of close times, there was all the fun. There were all the lessons, but the real uh, the real reason I don't think there's a question yeah. to pose is that that consciousness is present right now if I choose to be present with it. And a lot of the work I do with people, it's about learning to access the inner master um, and bring that as a dynamic reality into their day to day experience. So it's very useful to, to do that first thing in the morning and last thing at night uh, and just say, is there any information for me? Show it to me in ways I can understand. Give me the strength and the courage to act on it. And, uh, uh, and the last thing my wife and I do at night before we go to sleep is gratitude. As Nat was, and we do it out loud and, and consciously. It's a really beautiful way to anchor that, that, that wisdom of the divine. Yeah, I think, um, and that will probably contest to this, and I'm sure you've got your experiences, Russell, and maybe for the rest of us, we, we have those experiences too with JR, but being with him, at least in my experience, was I didn't really have a lot of questions. There was just, we would talk about stupid shit, excuse my language, uh, because it was, and just be funny. Like how in corporations does the billing service work so well and the support tech support is so terrible? You know, 
like just silly nonsense that would be talked about because I guess he shared so much that there is so much available and for that I'm forever grateful and um yeah so that, that thanks for letting me share I guess my piece there yeah I'll say this Mark um if our friend Eric uh yeah. who also passed away if you asked him that question I'm sure he would have many questions he would have thousands <laughs> He, our good friend who passed away, always had a thousand questions. <laughs> but but uh, I would be, and if I'm being maybe, honest, you know what? Maybe I, he's got his answers now. <laughs> yeah, if I'm being honest, I would also say, Russell, I would come back to the first ground rule in insight. Now, how do I take care of myself so I can help take care of others? And how can I love a little bit more each day? You know, um, I think that ground rule just, I'm still learning it every every minute of every day. That's for sure. So, I I thank you for all your wisdoms that you landed for us. It's uh, they're they're my God posts. That's for sure. Well, absolutely. Let us know if we can help. Just send money. <laughs> Bye for now. Thanks, Mark. Well, I know um, uh, for those who are in distant time zones, I see a note from Simon that it's 1.20 already in the UK, so 90 night time for them. Uh, Nat, anything you want to bring up that we haven't yet addressed of, of the thousand things we haven't addressed? <laughs> well, apparently not. Because <laughs> my internet uh, here, it'll let me now. But I, I think that I, I don't really have more to share that's coming present right now. Um, you know, I really appreciate the opportunity. You know, I used to see. You know, we've referenced a lot, John Roger here. I used to see him get up in front of a lot of people when he was really sick and uh, had like all sorts of ailments. And then he'd get up in front of people and be like, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, and, and do a show and no one would know. And then get off stage and end up back really unwell. And the way I got, I woke up this morning, I've, I've been under the weather for a few, couple of days or whatever it's been. I did not think that I thought I would have my jazzy, jazz radio talk show voice if I had a voice at all it, it was uh but I was like I'm doing this event and you know there's something magical about this and so I, I give my appreciation to all of you here who've put your energy here uh because it's definitely I've I've felt better than my internet. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> right now, I I I this was my first real test of uh, the Tesla. What's it? Not Tesla. The uh, Starlink satellite. I was on mm -hmm. a different satellite service, which I still have, <clears throat> and it's better than that one. But I'm still working on it here in, in Puerto Rico in the Bermuda Triangle. So yeah. <laughs> so um a, a question for all oh, let's let's do joyce absolutely can i mute yourself yes um thank you for calling on me i think what i've been working with most recently is uh really wanting to experience the traveler and the Christ within me as me. And I don't know that I'm going to recognize that um, when it happens, or maybe it's already happening. I mean, if you can give, share a point of view about that is like, how would I recognize or what are the signposts along the way that 
I really am experiencing the traveler in me. I mean, I talk to JR inside of me all of the time. So, you know, like, so sometimes I just feel like standing back and, and allowing and observing, but how do I really know, you know, whether it's me, my, my ego, or whether the traveler and the Christ is really expressing through me. Uh, can you speak to that, please? So how, how do you know? I, well, I, I suppose there would just, my thought would be that there would just be all of this, you know, magic and miracles and all this cool stuff would be going on. But the truth is, is I really like and enjoy a really simple, ordinary life. But, you know, I still deal with being in a body. I still have to pay bills, um, shop for food. You know, there is that 10% that we all have to do. I guess I have this idea that if I'm really integrated into the divine, that I would be living in some sort of paradise or something. And what makes you think you're not? It's pretty ordinary here, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's like, uh, I would say that my, my life lines up pretty easily, but not always. You know, I don't always get what I want. I mean, I there are things that I thought- Hold what? on, hold on. Um, I'll do a little bit with you here, but this would be lovely to do more one-on-one -on -one work. Because I listen, I listen intently, as I said earlier, to the energetic beneath, but I listen to the words as well. Um, and you said two things just now when I interrupted you. Uh, goes easily, but I don't always get what I want. And you've got those two connected, and they're not. Mm. If what you wanted was your life to go easily, maybe you'd have everything always. There's the distinction there that if we turn your question on its head, the question would be, how do you know when you're not one with the Christ? How do you know when you're not one with the divine? So we have to look at both sides of that one to start coming into this awareness pattern. And it is about awareness. I'm pondering. I hear you. I'm pondering. Yeah. And and see if you can move from here to here. Yeah. And let that begin to reveal. And the answer is reveal itself. So, you know, there's so many metaphors here. Jared always used to say, well, if you ever feel abandoned by God, guess who moved? So you're asking, how do I know when I'm one? And well, so what do you have to focus on to not know that you're one? It's that old Bob Newhart comedy sketch. Stop it. <laughs> you have to find out what you see. If peace is always present, what do I have to focus on to not be in peace? And that's where my learning is. So if my life is easy, but I don't always get what I want, then focusing on, well, what's this thing that I want? And what's that supposed to produce for me? Well, what is it that I'm really after? And sooner or later, you're going to come back into the awareness that it's already present with you, but you're not always present with it. Okay. Now, there's, there's, there's layers to this, but that's, I think, fundamentally uh, what's going on. Um, yeah so it's like you have this 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 um conflicting thing inside you know it's not about your head but you go there and you want your head to explain it to you yes 
Well, that's the, the old thing, you know, Jared would say, well, explain an orange. <laughs> you experience one, but you're never going to explain it. So. Well, the important key that you gave me, and of course I know it, I know it, is just like getting right back into my heart, always. Yeah. So, yeah. See, in, in Proverbs, it said, as a man thinketh in his heart, so he becomes. Now, you know, if we can even take that into the current world of uh, how neuroscience works. We have neurons in the heart. You know, 20 years ago, that may not have been so well known, but now there's bundles. We know there's bundles there. Neurons are part of the thought process. There's more information that goes from the heart to the brain than from the brain to the heart. Yet we keep trying to have the brain be in charge. So why don't we use what's called the heart brain? Because as we think in our heart, mm -hmm. so we become, not as we think in our head. So we have to de determine to whom will we defer and where do we give dominion? And in the heart, it's always a loving presence. Yeah. But the loving presence is not always reflected to me. But. <laughs> so there you have that old story of Jesus walking the path with the disciples and there's the decaying dog on the side of the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's not always reflected to me because I don't always reflect it. But we go past that. This is a world of reflected light. Mm -hmm. The light just is. It's not reflecting. We only see through reflection when we look with these eyes. So uh, years and years ago, 1978, I was going in for a, an eye surgery called radiokeratotomy. I was almost legally blind. And that's where they put little slits with a scalpel in your cornea and it flattens the lens. And JR spoke to me the day before and he said, well, you know, Russell, the problem is now physical, but the source isn't. What do you mean? Well, your, your, your eyesight is now, he didn't use the word damaged, but yeah, it's in the condition it is. Um, but the source is because for years now, You've been straining to see with your physical eyes things you can only see with your spiritual eyes. Now, I'd only been around Jared for five years at that point, and he spent a lot of time then with never telling me, but teaching me how to see with the spiritual eyes and hear with the spiritual ears, to hear with the spiritual heart. And that's what you're really asking about. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I'll be emailing you. There's, there's more there, but thank okay. you so much. It's good. It's all good. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Would you like me to give you a little view on that too, Joyce? So to me, one of the writing, piggybacking on some of what Russell was saying is that you know, like, what are the things that it's like, what are the things you have to let go of to get into peace? Because you're already that it's really an awareness issue. Um, if you're asking, if you're questioning, if you're wondering, how do I know, then you're obviously not in the awareness. Um, you know, so that's one thing to let go of you know, of like, you're trying to force it, which is just an ego thing to, to, again, get it how you want it. That's just not how it comes. <laughs> um, and I don't know if you've ever seen the, the Twaji, the, that, that gaze, and you can see something like that when you look at it, you know, sometimes when you see a baby, they're just so close to that spirit and it just moves something inside of you the thing that it moves inside of you that's where it's at you know because that's in you as well you Thanks. know that 
that the thing that you're seeing is within you. But now is that, do you think that that's possible that we're always, that we can always be in that place? I mean, I can be in that place, you know, when I go to a training or I'm reading a discourse or listening to a sat, you know, but if I'm out there in the world, you know. Well, ex excuse my expression, but holy shit, you can get to that place because how many people in this world have had, sometimes people have get to that place one time in their life and they're like, they go on that. They're talking about that the rest of their life. And you're just telling me <laughs> that you can get to that place. And you've had that experience, not just once. So, so that's a lot to ask. I, th I think that, you know. No, so, okay, look, here's a, here's a little <laughs> thing ahead, for Russell. you. Here's a little thing for everybody. Um, uh, and uh, the JR citation again. Um, Joyce, do you know how to walk? Well, yes. Are you successful at walking? I am. Do you ever trip or stumble or fall? Sometimes I do. Well, what? You can't walk? <laughs> <laughs> so okay. what's the secret to walking? Jared would say, that if you can walk, you're only 51% successful at walking. What did he mean by that? And he explained it. He said, you only got up one more time than you fell. But now you put more and more time and space between trips and falls. So what you can do, I have a good friend, um, uh, who's pimps? His name is Mitchell. I know Mitchell. I, I know, I, I had that, ex I know. So for those who don't know, Mitchell uh, had been a cable car gripman in San Francisco, riding his motorcycle into the cable car bar in a laundry van, runs a stop sign, crashes into him, his motorcycle gas tank explodes, it burns his face off and burns all of his fingers off. Three years of, of surgery after surgery after surgery, he's, he's finally out of that, he becomes a pilot. Um, he's in a takeoff with his plane, it crashes, and he winds up paralyzed. And Mitchell's book is called, It's Not What Happens to You, It's What You Do About It. And his one of his favorite taglines is that before I was paralyzed, there were 10,000 things I could do. Now there's 9,000. Do I celebrate the 9,000 or complain about the 1,000 I lost? And that's what you're talking about here. You keep focusing on the trips and the falls. Well, if you keep focusing on the trips and the falls, guess what? You're, you're not programming. This is neuroscience 101. Yeah. You're programming yourself to find the trips and the falls. But if you can celebrate and will never, in my experience, I never know when I'm in it till just after I leave it. Yeah. But that's when I have to go, oh, thank God I was there. Yeah. And that opens up the possibility. Now, I've learned a few tricks when I'm facilitating that helped me check to see if I'm in that flow. Let's celebrate. Celebrate yeah. the E, celebrate the grace, celebrate the peace. Oh, that's right. Nat said gratitude. Yes, of course. And yeah, that's a good one. Great. All right. Got it. Thank you so much, both of you. It was great. Thanks. And Steed, I, I did put your answer about contacting in the uh, chat if you saw it. Well, uh, we're uh, at our time. Let me ask a question of, of everybody. And you can use the little reactions button at the bottom. Uh, if you click on that, you'll see a little thumbs up. Uh, if, if you would be interested in having Nat and me do something else in the future, uh, just hit the thumbs up and let us know because we'll, we can imagine doing something. Well, there you go. Matt, we're being called forward. Hey, I'm I'm happy to uh, schedule and uh, 
internet permitting. <laughs> <laughs> health and internet permitting. <laughs> health and internet permit. Not even health, because I mean, I showed up That's today. Right. Uh, sure. uh, internet and uh, <laughs> internet permitting. Let's put it that way. Uh, yeah. So um, if you'd like, you can drop me or drop Nat an email and just suggest anything. If you've got some themes or topics that you'd find interesting, uh, we, we may or may not be able to do something, but uh, Nat just dropped his uh, email into the chat and uh, mine's there too. Mine's really easy. It's just my name, Russell at russellbishop.com. There's two, Rus two S's and two L's in Russell. So uh, it's been a, a real treat and a blessing to be with you folks and uh i know nat and i we, we love doing this kind of stuff with people so thank you for letting us be with you yeah thank you every thanks to everyone i'm so grateful that we had this opportunity with you well all right thank you nat and russell